Daily bias is useless. And I'm going to tell you why. I watched hours of daily bias videos from traders that made my eyes want to bleed <laughs> in order to do this. Um, so why is it so difficult? Why is daily bias the, the one thing people struggle with? You see videos all over the place of the final piece of the puzzle. Here's how to do daily bias. You know, like all of it, like it's like it's the secret to unlocking everything. Why is it such a big deal? Why is it so difficult? And this is all my opinion, by the way. So if you don't agree with it, you can exit the video. That's fine. <laughs> this is just my opinion of daily bias. <clears throat> So why it's so difficult is you're trying to predict. You're trying to predict what's going to happen tomorrow as a whole. This isn't what we do. ICT says this several times. We're not trying to predict. We're trying, we're reacting to what price is showing us. Obviously, when you get really good, you can predict what's going to happen next with some pretty decent odds, but that takes some considerable screen time. You see ICT... I mean, doing pretty good at predicting things. <clears throat> He's also very good at reading market like price to the to the minute <clears throat> and telling you what each candle is going to do, just reading it live. But he can also predict quite well what's going to happen, and that takes time. Uh, so, who struggles the most with daily bias? New traders. That's why it's such a big thing. Um, newer, newer traders aren't going to have that experience to be able to pr predict that far into the future. And frankly, depending on what your strategy is, it's not really necessary. And I'll get into that. So you have a 50-50 shot of getting it right at that point. You're either predicting it's going to go up <clears throat> or it's going to go down the next day. That's, a, that's what you're picking for daily bias. Either you're going to have a bearish day or a bullish day. You have a 50-50 shot of getting it right. That cuts your odds in half. Most new traders learn scalping first just to get their feet wet, in and out, quick moves. Daily bias doesn't matter in the least. Hourly bias or something like that would be much more reasonable. But what, what ends up happening, what ends up being the struggle, I think, is people, newer traders, I guess, that might not have the, the experience to know any better. I don't know. They think they have to have a daily bias. They have to know or be able to figure out tomorrow's going to be bearish. So now I can look for a bearish setup. And if a if the day just runs bullish, well, they don't get a setup because they stick to that bias. Like it's the only thing that can happen. And then they miss the entire the entire day, which is, I mean, we're day traders, not every day traders. So that's fine to not trade every day. But how how dumb is it to like to feel how dumb would you feel? You know, you pick you, you just picked 50 50 shot of getting it right. You based on what you think you saw, you picked bearish and it was a, a buy day the whole day. <clears throat> So it's not so bad if you can learn to switch your bias, if you can learn to read price and, and change that. But a lot of people don't. And it's often taught, pick a bias and stick to it. If your bias is bearish, don't take a long. And I just think that's, I just think that's wrong. Um, in my opinion, just read order flow and displacement. Read liquidity and imbalances, whether they're respected or disrespected. Look for untapped areas or unswept levels of liquidity look for smooth highs and lows equal highs and lows uh, and that kind of thing I made a note here I tried to script this a little bit I made a note here to show some highs and lows that are good and bad equal highs and lows that are good and bad so I'm going to scroll back no, I'm on the daily right now, aren't I? I'm going to show you this first, and then I'm going to show you something that I keep seeing about equal highs and lows that drives me insane. So so we're on a daily time frame here. Um, 
make sure you can see this. Okay, so we're on a daily time frame here. This gray box is a daily Sibby. So what do you think is going to happen? What is this? This is a Monday. What do you think is going to happen on Tuesday? Based on looking at this chart. We'll zoom in a little bit here. Also, I changed my colors to a lighter background and it's like blinding me. It's really lighting up my face. <laughs> anyway, what do you think is going to happen? In, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's going to be a bullish day and we're going to come up into this daily Sibby. And maybe then once we react to this, maybe then we can start looking for bearish moves. So I'd be looking for buys the whole day, trying to get up into there. I mean, you could also, maybe it'll just be like morning session. We'll get up in there and then you could look for some cells, some shorts in the PM. You could kind of split it that way and just kind of see what happens once we get up in here. But I mean, basically for the morning session, I'm looking for, I'm looking for longs. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, look what happens. It doesn't even get there. Look at this kind of, look at this day. This is a Tuesday. I don't even remember if there was news or not, but look at this thing, right? I did kind of pick this day out just to prove the point, but that's 17.9. That's a four, almost 500 point move. You know how many opportunities are in that day to get short? or to try to long your way back up, thinking we're supposed to get up here first. And you just long your whole way down this bearish day getting wrecked, or you miss that whole move and you just watch it melt. And like watching it's better than losing, you know, I'd rather miss a move than to lose the move, but picking a daily bias can bite you in the butt a lot. So I don't particularly like to do that. Um, now I think I need to scroll over here. Tuesday. Tuesday. So let me pull this chart over. This is Tuesday on a 15 minute chart. Okay, so right here is 830. We had some 830 news and then we had 930 open and we might have even had 1030 news. Let's do this. Tuesday, 8.30 news and 10 o'clock news. That's what I meant. 10 o'clock news. Uh, which is... Like right here. Okay. So if you look at this, we'll zoom in a little bit. More at the start of the day. Kind of that 8.30, 9.30, 10 o'clock range here. When the news happens at 8.30, is kind of your first indication of what's going to happen after the overnight session, which pretty much does nothing, right? 8.30 news goes straight down a good number of points. I think it's not that it entirely matters, but I don't know. That's a good 40, 50 points, okay? So you're like, hmm, that could be a good manipulation maybe to long up to that daily SIBI. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that. And uh, you may, maybe you got in here and, and at least got along up to some of this buy side, whatever. Hypothetically speaking, doesn't do much. But what, I mean, once once 9.30 opens, at least on a 15 minute higher time frame here, what about this looks bullish? Nothing, nothing at all. 9.30 came up, there's your Judas swing. We kind of danced around until 10. 10 o'clock open manipulates up, takes any remaining buy side that might be here from people trailing their stops and just melts <laughs> through the new week opening gap, which is this blue area. It re, like this 15 minute Sibby, it got inversed and it re inversed that, I guess, or whatever, came closed back down below it. We had a retracement. I didn't do, I don't think I did anything this day until here, where this 15 minute candle created a market structure shift and cleared these equal lows. These are nice equal lows. Big major time frame, big wicks, nice equal lows. We cleared those out, shifted structure, and I looked for a short somewhere in here, I think. And I definitely didn't ride it down the hallway, but I got a good piece, you know? 
somewhere before noon. I don't really do the PM session, so kind of got the last leg of the morning piece of it. But my point is, on the daily chart, this looked like we could go bullish into the daily SIBI. And there's if you learn to read a little bit lower of a time frame because you're a day trader, you're a scalper. All that matters is what happens in the next hour, maybe two. Are you, unless you're really trying to catch the entire daily range, which some people do, again, typically more experienced people, the daily bias makes no difference, none at all. Just like look, narrow it down just a little bit, look for, you know, kind of what that structure is telling you and then go down into like the one minute, five minutes, something like that for your actual trade setup and entry based on what you're seeing here. So after, after we shifted on the 15, I went down to the one minute and found something in some of this retracement here to catch that leg down, you know, something like that. That's my point. Uh, daily bias just at least I've never, I, I don't really use it. Sometimes I talk about it in my discord group of like, I'll look at weekly profiles and kind of what each day of the week is doing to see how it's matching the weekly profiles that, East, that ICT is taught. It can kind of give you a, an idea of what the next day is going to do, but does it really matter? Do I really hold to it? Do I really have conviction or care about the direction of the next day? Not at all. I just wait and see what price reacts to. We took liquidity. We, we interacted with high time frame. 15 minute is my high time frame. PD arrays. I don't need to go any higher than this. Sometimes I glance at the one hour, but I don't really need to go any higher than this. I don't care what the daily's doing. And some, I mean, some people scoff at that, but you're not, most of you are trying to get maybe a five or 10 minute move, maybe 30 minutes. If it takes a while, you're, you're scalping for the most part. Um, and, you know, until you get better, some of you are out there where you are holding f like the whole 10 a.m. candle, maybe or from 10 to 10 to noon. And that's sweet. Very great. But I, I bet you don't use daily bias as much as you think you do. Um, so that's kind of a quick and dirty, in my opinion, about daily bias. What I wanted to show you was quality equal highs and lows because I was seeing this a lot, too. Um, and some people are just picking whatever equal highs and lows they want to, and it, it's not like that. So I'm going to pull this back over. We're going to go to the one minute. And I got to scroll back here to, I marked some out for examples, 425. So are you, uh, those 15 minute equal lows are really nice. If you see them like that, even on a one minute where they're big major wick lows and they're spaced apart nicely, those are good equal lows. Um, and I'll find some more good ones or whatever, but I want to show you these bad ones. 425, a little bit further, right here. some reason my trading view is running slow I also have music in the background for the for the first time hopefully it's not too loud but I think I'll edit that if it is anyways all right so here's what I see a lot with equal lows and equal highs <clears throat> when there's two of them I'm, I'm on the one minute chart remember and most of the time you don't go below the one minute chart there are some 30 second strategies, maybe even 50 second strategies where these would be spaced apart for your strategy on those lower time frames. Sure, maybe these could be used, but most of us don't go below the one minute. That these equal highs right next to each other don't matter at all. Not even a little bit. There's some down here, I think. Yeah. Equal lows that are two equal lows right next to each other. Doesn't matter. Not even a little. And people use them and, and have such such high conviction and they, they never get hit, at least not until way later in the day maybe or they're just not regarded as any kind of strong draw. They're too close together. 
there's nothing there's nothing here now when you have equal lows that are more spaced apart retail is seeing that as support or resistance depending on the direction this doesn't the only reason this one in particular might be anything is it's really close to that low too so like retail could see this little double bounce here as some kind of little support so maybe these ones will come back but these worthless absolutely worthless in my opinion i'm just saying i don't think that this is the correct use of equal highs and lows in all of the studies that i've done of ict and how he talks about them maybe maybe he pulls out an example of these just because it works in in something that he's trying to do he does that a lot um especially with talking about order blocks I struggled with that early on he'll pick the wick or the body of the order block depending on what works for the setup he's trying to teach and it doesn't really help you understand which to learn but this is crap stop doing that these aren't equal highs <laughs> um relative equal highs are nice those are okay too they don't have to be perfect they these are just as strong as perfect ones even if they're you know if they're if they're one tick off they're still equal highs you know what i mean um a lot of people are getting real picky about that kind of precision look at this this is a nice set of equal highs i think they are to the tick let's see 17503 is the high there 17503 is the high there so those are very nice perfect equal highs and the 830 news swept those beautifully. Notice it didn't give two flying Fs about the equal highs left up here because they don't matter. <laughs> okay, I promise. Um, so when you're looking at equal highs and lows as part of how to determine liquidity and direction and give yourself an idea of where price could go, that's one one thing you can use and that's how i would identify them like i said you can also use like fair value gaps especially on the 15 minute uh good example is this morning <clears throat> this is the fomc uh move and after a move like this we go you know we cleared all the sell side we came up here cleared a bunch of buy side came back down right to the origin again now what do you think we're gonna do no idea. We'll have to wait and see. You can't predict what's going to happen the next day. You can't. I mean, maybe with 30 years of experience, you can have an idea. But most of us can't do that. We're, most of us aren't ICT trying to learn this stuff here. It's Most of us are newer than a year or maybe just a couple of years. The point is you can't predict what's going to happen after a big move that clears everything on both sides. So what do you do? You wait and see what we interact with. There's a giant 15 minute uh, Sibby here. And I drew this out at one point. Um, let's go from this low to this high. It's also near 50% and or OTE. So like we could come, we have, you know, valid reason to come into here. And sure enough, we do. So that's what I used for my quote unquote bias I said, if we come into here, I'm looking for shorts off of here. And then there's a new dog right here or a new day opening gap right here. That's probably going to be the target. I put that in my discord uh, before it happened and we came off of here. I took a short like right at 930, somewhere right up in here. And I only held it for about 15 ish points, but it went all the way down to the uh, new day opening gap and took south side even. So previous days low sell side so um i didn't need daily bias for that i didn't i looked at only the 15 minute only as high as the 15 minute chart i saw something that price could interact with and kind of based my idea off of that now technically that's fractal like you could see this price movement on the daily chart that's valid but that's 
that's use that's useless for all of but a certain type of trader, right? It just is. I, I'm sorry. I just don't see the use in daily bias. I think it's useless. Go on a lower time frame because I'm only, I'm only taking nine thirty to ten thirty. I don't need to know what the whole day is going to do. I don't give a, I don't give a shit. I don't. And you get a day like this where like, it can go five different directions. The day starts and it goes up, comes down, goes up. We're probably going to come up here and then the PM come down again. It's just going to go up and down and up and down. It can do that in a day. So why try to why try to predict the bias of that whole chop? It doesn't matter. So look at a lower time frame. Um, it's nice to look at the daily chart for those super high time frame PD arrays because they will eventually get traded into. Usually we could have a daily breakaway gap up there. We might never come back to that. We're looking pretty bearish on the overall order flow, uh, but the daily rarely leaves unfilled areas. It really doesn't. Go back and look at the history of the daily chart. There's really not anything that's left unfilled. So my <clears throat> like my worst case scenario is it does leave that gap for a while. Um, say we trade bearish for most of May and then June and July get bullish again. We'll come back up there and fill it. You know, it could be that kind of thing. So what I would say uh, you guys should do is like go on FX replay or something where you can get some good historical data and just pull up the daily chart on NQ or ES. I like NQ and just try to pick the, the, the direction of each candle, which would be each day and see how often you're right based on what you see there. And then do the same thing on the 15 or even the one hour and follow order flow and pick the next candle or two uh, direction based off of liquidity levels and, and PD arrays and which one was, which one had a better ratio? Which one did you get right more? I would bet it's probably the 15 minute chart, not the daily, because so much can happen in the day. Whereas you can pretty, pretty well guess the next 15 minutes, like, as soon as we come into here, I know the next 15 minute candle is probably going to be a down close. And that's why I framed a short around that. So give that a try. Give that some practice and see what you think. Um, otherwise, I think that's really all I got. I hope that makes sense of why I think daily bias is useless. I think the daily chart is too high for most of us scalpers and people use it wrong. People stick to it. Like it's the only thing that can happen that day and they get messed up because they can't adapt and adjust to what price is doing. You can't, you just can't predict you, 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 you watch price and, and react to what it's showing you. Um, you can anticipate things that's different than predicting. So understand that, but that's, that's my main reason why. And, uh, I mean, whether you disagree with me or agree with me, I guess is neither here nor there for me. But if you want to talk about it, uh, link to the Discord is below. Um, you can check that out and uh, and join in on our group. And that's, I mean, yeah, that's that's really all I got. This is probably going to be my last video for a little while. Moving house um, is going to take up most of my time. So I'll try to get some more videos out mid-May or so. And uh and yeah, well, thanks for checking it out and have a good day.